Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shake the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-6040. Item Number 6040 Containment Class Esoteric Special Containment Procedures Any new discovered instances of SCP-6040 near urban or inhabited areas are to be reported and recovered by available agents if possible. If recovery is impossible due to environmental factors or lack of resources, a report of active specimen must be completed and sent to tracking at business.biz. Note that this email address may be subject to change, as inconspicuous cover emails addresses are rotated out upon unsolicited inquiry by non-Foundation members. Specimens in uninhabited areas are to be reported, but not recovered unless they exceed the size of 1.4 meters when extended. Individual specimens can easily be contained, but the Foundation cannot achieve containment of entire species because of its large population and many potential habitats across the world, Due to the inherent need of appropriate and ethical housing for captured members of the species, agents are recommended to ignore possible sightings of SCP-6040 unless there is clear evidence of the presence of a specimen engaging in predatory behavior. Captured subjects are to be sent to Wilson's Wildlife Solutions, WWS, for further care and study. Updates are to be transmitted in regular communications between WWS and Usorpal Site 64. If no specialized enclosures are currently available at WWS, specimens are to be temporarily kept in available facilities wherever possible. No current plans are in motion for a specialized containment facility for specimens of SCP-6040. Subjects under study are to be kept with other specimens in an enclosure imitating a wooded natural environment with a minimum size of a kilometer, with an additional 100 meters per specimen once the number of three has been exceeded. A buffer zone near the access point entrance must be absent of any obstruction to the line of sight of cameras. Cameras are to be hidden or protected by a plexiglass enclosure. Walled surfaces near access point of enclosure must be smoothed to discourage climbing behavior near door. Natural fauna such as insects, common reptiles, birds and fish, if facility can accommodate a river simulation, can be added to the enclosure to simulate natural environments. Mammals, of any size, should not be added unless researchers are trying to observe hunting behavior. After adjusting to new environment, subjects are generally docile as long as they are fed an adequate portion of meat, relative to their size, every week. In inhabited areas, local animal control specialists are to be contacted and hired on a need-to-know basis, if available, with agent giving them special instructions. Animal is unknown, a rabbit raccoon or something. Capture of SCP-6040 can be completed with standard animal control equipment, with use of protective gear and tranquilizers guns. Once capture of specimen is complete, agents are to proceed administration of Class A anesthetics on animal control specialists and any civilians that has had a clear view of specimens. Smaller captured specimens, less than 1.4 meters when extended, are to be sent in robust soundproof cage, List of approved models can be requested at cooktracking at business.biz, by a mail, maximum package size of 3 meters, or delivered by hand to a nearby facility if possible. Research has demonstrated the ability of specimens surviving for 40 days without food, but shipping should be expedited if possible. Advanced Capture Tactics with Mobile Task Force Assistance If complications arrive in the capture of a specimen of SCP-6040, or an incident involving a specimen of SCP-6040 meets one of the following criteria, the relevant mobile task force must be contacted. Contact MTF Epsilon 6 If a specimen exceeds safe capture size, extended size of plus 1.4 meters, in an inhabited area, if a specimen repeatedly avoids capture, and or is gaining attention in the media, contact MTF Lambda 12. If a specimen exceeds safe capture size, extended size of plus 1.4 meters, in a mostly uninhabited area, MTF will conduct potential risk evaluation and determine if capture is necessary. If a specimen is deemed responsible of animal attacks on humans or deemed a man-eater, 
Specimens of 6,040 will be dealt by relevant task force. Use of heavy-duty tranquilizers and advanced netting recommended to facilitate capture. Specimens of SCP-6040 deemed to be responsible of animal attacks or deemed a man-eater will be dealt with extreme prejudice, with use of lethal force a possibility in the interest of preserving human life. Specimens captured by either task force are to be relocated to facility XRC Site-91. Live specimens are to be contained on second floor in additional SCP containment, with research in predatory behavior. Deceased specimens are to be stored in a sealed container before transport, with a solution 23% formaldehyde, 5% glutaraldehyde, 2% methanol, diluted in saline to avoid rapid decomposition of specimens. Specimens are to be moved to Xenobiological Research Laboratory for dissection and genetic analysis. Description SCP-6040, scientific name Nautilus venerivosem, is a species of predators of mammalian life forms, with a complex xenobiology that has been approximated to be closest in nature to cephalopods of terrestrial origin. The species is a nocturnal predator of small mammals. The species uses six extendable limbs to position itself out of view, often lying still before choking its prey to death with its center limbs. The species assimilate larynges of prey into their bodies, roughly parroting sounds of prey as part of their calling and hunting behavior. The species is characterized by bilateral body symmetry, a prominent head and six extendable jointed limbs resembling flat-ended tentacles. Size of species is variable, but contracted size of species when limbs are retracted is generally two-fifths of full extended size. Species typically ranges from 0.6 meters to 1.2 meters. Eye organs occupy approximately 30% of the side of their heads, with a large chitinous beak at the bottom. Captured specimens of SCP-6040 have variations in body color, but the range extends from shades of brown to purple, with darker hue variants extending to black. Several spines are hidden under the skin and are only visible if the species exhibits defensive behaviors. Further analysis of the species' biological and physiological traits can be read in adjacent notes. Short Notes on the Biology of the Nautilus Venere Bosem by Dr. Edgar Fredericton Notice from the Foundation Records and Information Security Administration the specifics of the creature's anatomy are hereby written from short notes on the biology of the Nautilus venerivosum taken from the research of the now deceased Dr. Edgar Fredericton, following an incident in his research with SCP-6040. Short notes on the biology of the Nautilus venerivosum by Dr. Edgar Fredericton. Presented by yours truly. I've done considerable research for the Foundation but I consider SCP-6040, known as the Nautilus venari vosem, my magnum opus. The species carries incredible genetic potential, and we have truly have much to learn from its unique biology. Without further ado, please enrich yourself with the condensed form of my work on the N. venari vosem. Etymology Cognomen has been given by local residents according to regional folktales, SCP-6040 is thus known as Cognomen Cat Warbler. Specifics of the etymology is rooted in the perception that SCP-6040's main prey consists of Felis catus, commonly known as house cats. This taxonomy is erroneous as research has proven that the species are opportunistic hunters that prey on various mammals, with specimens of Felis catus being a common prey as a result of coincidence because of the widespread and invasive nature of Felis catus in the world. More information is located in hunting and feeding section. Usage of the term warbler seems to be related to the loosely defined quavering or warbling in the vocalizations of the species. See communication, sleep and social behavior section for elaboration on vocalization behaviors. After analysis of behavior, the name Nautilus venari vosem, and venari vosem, is given to the species by Dr. Fredericton, Given the hunting tactics of the species and in honor of the troubled history of the nomenclatures of specimens in the Nautilus genus, Dr. Fredericton reminds staff that the species has to be referred by proper name. Some staff members have been caught calling the species by erroneous term daddy longlegs and will face disciplinary action on continued infractions. Accepted names are cat warbler in regards to folktale or scientific name Nautilus venari vosem. Note from the doctor. So I'm thinking to myself, 
why shouldn't I tell you readers more about the great mind behind all this research? If I can inspire any of you with my wisdom, I might as well share all of the real stuff behind my work. I'm just an ordinary man really, but who am I to judge? Ha! Ha! Environment Specimens of the species have been found across the world in various different climates. Species seems to occupy tropical semi-arid, Mediterranean, humid continental, marine west coast, highlands, humid subtropical and humid continental weathers, with a clear preference for wooded areas. Species seem to avoid dry weather regions, such as desert, and extreme cold weather such tundra, subarctic or ice caps weather regions. Skeletal Structure Although SCP-6040 is most closely related to cephalopods, in regards to its general biology and brain functionality, the biggest divergence is that the species is not invertebrate. Dissections have shown an advanced skeletal structure composed of crystallized cartilage, with molecular resemblances to the cartilage of specimens of the Salachimorpha clade, commonly known as sharks. The resemblance ends on the molecular level as the bone structures are vastly different, shaped and organized to accommodate the unique hunting behavior of the species. More information is located in Hunting and Feeding section. Inside the head of the Envenary vosem lies a thick cranium protecting its primary brain from blunt impacts. Six flat-ended tentacled limbs are attached to the side of the head symmetrical in distancing. The front and back tentacles are capable of moving on a frontal axis to permit movement. The middle tentacles are capable of moving on a sagittal axis and are able to connect with each other. Attached by spheroid joints, the tentacles contain the structure of pseudospinal columns with a series of extendable muscles permitting the limbs to contract and adjust in height as needed. There is also unique spine mechanisms present in the specimens, as sections of spines are fused to bony nodules nested in the tissue of specimen with strands of collagen. When attacked or feeling stress, the Envenary vosem can break the nodule connectors and force these various spines to protrude from their limbs or cranium piercing their skin. The spines seem to be defensive as they do not serve in hunting of the prey of the Envenary vosem, potentially indicating an unknown predator of the species. Note from the doctor. Anyhow, these things have an amazing skeleton, they're like sharks had babies with squids and then God decided they were going to buy a bunch of spinal columns on sale. And what's that? They're gonna use them to rise up like my standing desk. PFFFT. We rarely seen them pull out their spines too, although SCP-6040-4 sometimes does it out of habit. It's a real meanie to anything around. Maybe it's because it's so small. Xenotransplantation, respiratory, digestive, and immune system. The species has a highly specialized respiratory system, digestive and immune system. Composed of a series of smaller air sacs, their lungs are connected to the laryngeal area and pharynx without a trachea. As the species is not born with laryngeas, they have a set of extendable laryngeal jaws. A row of specialized needle-like teeth is located inside of the jaw. Once and venary bosom kill their prey, they rapidly eat their way to their laryngeas with their chitinous beak and extend their laryngeal jaws to rip out their laryngeas. The newly acquired laryngeas will be integrated into the Envenary Vosem's bodies, their needle-like teeth providing blood and nerve endings to the new organs. An unknown protein compound named A is generated in the species' blood which seems directly responsible of successful integration of organs without a fatal immune response and necrosis of organs. Further research in the compound and the species' immune response might prove useful in developing heterologous transplants in human patients at XRC Site 91. The remainder of the digestive system of the Envenary vosem is similar to Octopus vulgaris, or the common octopus, with the exception of an enlarged radula, capable of guiding food and blocking the connected segment of laryngeal area and pharynx area to avoid chalking on ingested items. Note from the doctor. Crazy things happened when we were studying the species, apparently they got a really large one that's been transferred to quote unquote the cough facility cough 91 cough, not that I'm allowed there. They think it was eating horses and was moving on to bigger prey. We talk about them eating smaller mammals, but the only one I've studied that ate a horse was SCP-6040-1. Apparently, 
It was found in a barn after it got locked in by accident. It's the oldest one we got. Family thought they could see something outside their window whenever they were watching TV. Turns out SCP-6040-1 was the one doing the watching. Long story short, and lots of aggressive behavior later, but SCP-6040-1 gets an hour of color television per day if plays nice with other Renvenari Vosem. Nervous System the species' nervous system is largely responsible of their classification as entities resembling cephalopods. The Envenari Bosem have multiple brains, with a main brain and several smaller brains, composed of nerve cells clusters, in each of the limbs. These brains or clusters are able to control the limbs independently, adjusting their height and position as needed. The nerve clusters appear to be communicate with each other as the Envenari Bosem is able to perform several configurations rapidly within a short time. Effective configurations appear to be memorized when utilized frequently in their environment. Although the clusters seem to demonstrate long-term memory for configurations, it is unknown if they are able to store complex information such memories. Possessing two camera-type eyes similar to cephalopods, they occupy roughly 30% of the side of their cranium. These enormous eyes are externally mounted to the skin and are very sensitive to light and movement. They required a large amount of energy from the Envenari Vosem, requiring roughly 15% of their caloric intake per day. The species have advanced state of size to maintain their balance and hear frequencies in the range of a 100 to 64,000 Hz. The species seems to have an intelligence correlation with the size of the specimen, with larger specimens generally showcasing more advanced behaviors than smaller ones. Working theories assume that this is due to a larger brain size compared to regular specimens. Is it theorized that the Envenari Vosem is able to develop more advanced hunting patterns when ingesting larger mammals by growing in size to accommodate the larger larynx? Fringe theories suggest that the Envenari Vosem grow after consuming hormones from more advanced or complex brains, but are only pure speculation because of the unethical actions required to pursue this line of research. Note from the doctor. I hear a lot from younger researchers that think the Envenari Vosem can get smarter by eating brains. They're not zombies you juvenile idiots. I can't believe I had to include their stuff in my report. On a different note, I'm pretty sure those nerve clusters do a lot more than we think in the Envenari Vosem. SCP-6040-5 was initially found with a gunshot wound from a backwards idiot that shot at it. It got permanent damage on part of its brain on the left side. It often accidentally drops its larynx when it moves around, so some part of the clusters must be compensating for the missing gray matter. It's kind of cute when it has a hard time walking. Muscular and Vascular System Most of the muscle mass of the Envenari Vosem are composed of muscular hydrostats, structures composed of densely packed muscles. The unique extendable limb structures are possible due to load density and compressible fluid occupying the space between the segments of the pseudospinal columns. The muscles combined with the ball joints provide a large range of movement and complex configurations to allow the species to walk, climb and suspend itself in a variety of positions. The species possesses three hearts, one larger main heart for its primary vascular system and two smaller ones each for separate secondary vascular systems. The primary system is in charge of distributing oxygen from its lungs to its primary brain. The secondary systems on its left and right sides are in charge distributing secondary oxygen absorbed from its skin to its limbs, as well as maintaining the necessary pressure to compress the fluid in its limbs for extension and potential bursts of speed. Similar to cephalopods, the N. venari bosem utilizes hemocyanin for the transport of oxygen, giving its blood a blue color in an oxygenated state. The species utilizes a mostly closed circulatory system, as the species temporarily opens their circulatory system when assimilating larynges into their bodies. Note from the doctor. I really get excited when I look at the muscles of the Envenari Vosem. Weird little dudes use them to get taller and stand over prey. You'd think they're trying to be spooky flamingos or something. I get creeped out sometimes when SCP-6040-1 just stands tall and stares at the cameras. I feel like it knows we're watching it. 
it goes to prove that we don't know much about why they do what they do. And it won't get more TV time by sulking in front of the cameras, it tried that for a while, ha. Ha. Hunting and feeding. Typical hunting behavior is not often observed in laboratory because of ethical concerns regarding feeding small mammals to members of the N. venere vosem. Pseudo-hunting behavior has been noticed in captive specimens of the species, although behavior has since been recategorized as a form of playful behavior. Coincidental observations of the species in the wild have demonstrated general hunting behavior of the species. The species has a tendency to eat fresh prey in large quantities and does not eat for a period of approximately two weeks once it is full. Research has shown subjects entering a form of hibernation if unable to drink water for over four days. It can survive up to 40 days without food or water, but it will die if starved for longer. The species does not typically hunt cold-blooded creatures or members of the ornithuriclade, modern feathered birds. These are ignored unless the creature is starved and none of their typical prey are available. The species takes advantage of its darker skin coloring to mask themselves in the dark. Their hunting behavior is strictly nocturnal, although they are frequently active in the day. Typical behavior of species consists of specimens perching themselves into trees or in elevated positions sheltered from view. They will stand motionless until a prey passes under them. If no cover is available, they stand above nests, dens, or small passageways with their limbs extended, awaiting for prey. The species use their two central legs as a battering ram to break the prey's neck, or choke them to death with continued pressure. Smaller specimens are often without laryngies. They hunt for smaller prey until they are able to kill and assimilate their first laryngies into their bodies. If they possess laryngies assimilated from prey, they will parrot sounds heard from prey, these imitations are not perfect, with a warbling quality to them. The species do not inherently know how to imitate calls from prey. They can learn calls upon hearing them frequently and will incorporate them in their vocalizations upon practicing with compatible laryngies. Utilizing vocalizations, the species imitates prey calls in hunting behavior. They typically attract a member of the species or a predator of the species. When the species captures larger prey, they have a tendency to eject their currently assimilated laryngies by expelling them from their laryngeal jaw in favor of assimilating the laryngies from their larger prey. Specimens assimilating new laryngies have a period of adjustment in which they try to reproduce previous emulated calls. They may be incapable of emulating previous learned calls if new laryngies are incompatible with the sounds that were emulated. Note from the doctor. The folks have ethical concerns about giving cats and dogs to the Envenari Vosem. We should be giving the species proper prey, if we want to study their natural behavior. They've been talking of trying to use robots and scents to imitate prey, but who are they kidding? We don't have the budget, they have to pay my salary after all. Lifespan and Reproductive Behavior Current lifespan is unknown. First recovered subject SCP-6040-1 was found on December 20, 1951. Thus far, none of the subjects in captivity have died from old age. Members of the species can continue growing indefinitely if fed in excess, but most specimens do not eat more than needed unless they are fed live prey. Origin of the species is unknown and subject of debate. It is theorized that the species could have been around for longer than initial discovery of SCP-6040-1, but no fossilized proof has been recovered, as carcasses in the wild do not leave discernible traces upon digestion or decomposition. No reproductive behavior has been noted in the species, and specimens do not appear to be gendered or possess reproductive systems. Note from the doctor. It must have been one hell of a Christmas when they first found SCP-6040-1. I heard rumors that we keep finding bigger specimens like it, but we don't get them at 64. I've been asking to transfer or at least get clearance for Site-91 research. Guess this shark is stuck with the little fish for a while longer. Gosh, I am brilliant. I guess the losers at 9-1 need time to get sunglasses before they can handle a man like me. Communication, sleep, and social behavior 
members of the N-Venary Vosem use vocalization outside of interactions with prey. Typical behavior hunting behavior during nighttime will be imitation of animal calls or cries of pain to attract further prey. They have been observed to occasionally practice vocalizations parroting sounds previously heard. They have been observed practicing vocalizations to scare animals away, with a playful type of behavior in regards to members of the ornithuriclade, particularly songbirds. They are not mammalian, and although they possess larynges, these do not vocalize, instead use a syrinx organ to produce sound. Members of the N. venere vocem will occasionally attempt to imitate songbird vocalizations with little success, and try to approach them out of curiosity. Note from the doctor. I guess we're lucky the SCP-6040 don't have wings. SCP-6040-1 used to climb above the entry door of its enclosure. They had to smooth out the surfaces of the walls and add some reinforced windows, so it could look out and stop trying to get a jump on the researchers. They're thinking of adding a wall-mounted TV behind the window so it can watch it whenever it wants. A bad idea if you ask me. Performing a form of rest during daytime, occupying empty nests in trees or dens taken from prey, they will retract their limbs in an attempt to hide. They do not sleep for a set period of time, with the longest catalog time seen sleeping being 84 minutes without activity, and the average time of sleeping sessions being estimated at 15 minutes. The species tends to sleep 8 to 12 hours per day, with sessions being spread out mostly through the day and rarely at night. The Envenary Bosem appear to be social in nature, as they display pseudo-hunting behavior, or playful behavior, even when they are not hunting for prey to feed. They have been observed to kill prey without feeding, and in the absence of other members of their species, have a tendency to displace cold-blooded animals, such as fish or reptiles, using their limbs. Example of such behavior is using limbs to poke a fish or reptile, or attempting to move said animals in different positions. They have been observed to follow other animals out of curiosity, while keeping themselves hidden. This playful behavior may serve in learning vocalizations of prey as the Envenary Vosem do not inherently know how to imitate the vocalizations of prey and have to learn specific calls by observing behavior and hearing them repeatedly. Playful behavior has also been successfully reproduced using moving toys such as robotic imitations of animals. Interactions between members of the Envenary Vosem are unique as members with different larynges may not be able to produce the same sounds. Members have been known to reproduce sounds learned from other members of their species if they have compatible larynges. The species does not have language or coherent speech patterns, as every interaction between members is unique, and cannot necessarily be reproduced by other specimens. Specimens have also demonstrated a unique signaling behavior only performed with other members of the species, named cartwheeling. Using their limbs to perform a rapid rotation of their limbs to cartwheel on themselves, completing a full rotation towards the left, before cartwheeling to the right into their initial position. This behavior has also been performed by some specimens towards researchers that regularly interact with them. This has been theorized as a display of security towards them, or that the researchers are considered and venere vosem by the specimen. It is not recommended researchers attempt to cartwheel at signaling and venere vosem without proper training following incident with SCP-6040-4. Opposite to the cartwheel behavior is a signaling display of aggression, called posing. The signaling member will plant its limbs straight and firmly into the ground, extending itself to its largest possible size, and if they possess larynges, use the loudest vocalization they have learned in an attempt to intimate. Specimens have been classified into three general behaviors. Social, individual participates in group behavior with frequent exchange of vocalizations, following other specimens and performing signaling cartwheel behavior. Loner, individual rarely participates in group behavior, rarely vocalizes outside of hunting behavior and spends time alone. Rarely performs signaling cartwheel behavior. Aggressive. Individual disrupts group behavior with no predictable pattern, utilizing posing behavior towards individuals, and using its beak to harass or wound other individuals. Note from the doctor. I have to say it's kind of sad that some of them like to be alone. I guess some would say they can relate but that's not me. Talking about being social, 
but SCP-6040-3 was actually raised by a family that kept it after it ate the corpse of their old dog. They were going to bury him in their backyard, but I guess they thought it was doggy Jesus when it barked like old Sparky used to. Hilarious. They must have a hell of hard time in the early weeks and were pretty good at hiding it. That being said, SCP-6040-3 loves to play fetch with the researchers and is pretty popular with the other specimens. Speculation on Origin Specific evolutionary origin of species is under research as the genetic makeup of the species is carbon-based, with protein chains that are digestible and absent of general toxicity. Attempts to place the species in a phylogenetic tree is subject of debate, as in-depth analysis of genetics demonstrate no terrestrial genetic ancestor. Two speculative theories have emerged in regards to their genetic ancestry. I. The species originates from an alternate carbon-based dimension with an entirely different evolutionary speciation, adapted for unknown environments. 2. The species has been designed from carbon-based creatures by an intelligent creator, for reasons unknown. Note from the doctor. I finally get to be with the big boys. That's right, yours truly is being transferred to the Mystery 9 of 1 building. On my first tour of the job site some idiot security guard told me I wouldn't even last a day. We LLG SS WHOH as a PhD and WHOH hasn't Mr. Guard. Somebody call an ambulance, this guy got burned. Those idiots shouldn't even talk to me. I showed those naysayers who the biggest guy in the room was. Oh who you ask. That's right, me. Interview with Agent Bloom on Civilian Encounter of SCP-6040-5 Click to Collapse Forward, Identities and Location Redacted to Protect Subjects Interview with Civilian Subject Mr. A that encountered SCP-6040-5 and H. Mr. H. had assisted two civilian animal control employees from H. in capturing subject SCP-6040-5. Animal control employees had been administered Class A anesthetics as soon as SCP-6040-5 had been recovered. Foundation records and information security control procedure enacted with no photos or messages leaked from civilian subjects. Agent Bloom assumed role of local law enforcement for interview. Begin log. Thanks for listening to my story. I swear, everybody thinks I'm losing my mind, talking about my grand's old stories. No worries, Mr. A. I am not here to judge you, only to listen and help you process what you believe you saw. Angry grumble and a pause, what do you mean what I think I saw? Silent pause from Agent Bloom, Mr. A. I think we got off on the wrong foot. I'm sorry if I've offended you, I've worded myself poorly. I don't mean to say what you've experienced isn't real. Grumbling and a sigh, I'm sorry Mr. Bloom. I'm just so tired of people calling me crazy over this. Even the animal control people are telling me they never saw it, even after I called them and they captured it. Craziest thing too. When I talked to them later, they said I called but never left them a message. I paid those assholes cash and now they're pretending they never helped me catch the damn monster. What did they have Mr. A? You are talking about a monster, but you still haven't told me what you say they captured. It's the damn cat warbler that's what. A cat warbler? Like some sort of bird or cat? No. No. A cat warbler. A damned cat warbler, Mr. Bloom. I'm sorry, Mr. A. What do you mean by cat warbler? I don't believe I've ever heard someone talk about a cat warbler before. Grumbling, it's a damn storybook monster if I've ever heard of one. My gran used to tell me stories before going to bed, and it used to give me nightmares. I'm sorry, Mr. A. But I've never heard of a cat warbler in a storybook before. I can't blame ya. It's more of a story that's been passed down in my family. Always said out loud, never written down, but when I first saw it, I knew it was a goddamned cat warbler. I can never remember it exactly, but I got it on tape. And I got my gran, 
God bless her soul, to tell it to me one last time before she passed. She didn't know I was taping her of course. On tape? Are you saying that you have a recording of this story Mr. A? Yep. The one and only recording. Mr. Pulls out a Panasonic RQ2102 portable cassette recorder. Are we able to listen to this tape Mr. A? Why do you think I brought it? I want you to listen, to believe. Once you hear it, you'll know what I mean by monster. Mr. A presses play on the cassette player, and it starts with an audible crack. A female elderly crackling voice narrates a story. Deep in the night. The cat warbler's slight. You hear tomcats fight. At your windows, every time. The cat warblers bite. Too quiet with no light. At your windows, reunite. Tomcats hiss and yowl in spite. The cat warblers delights. You hear tomcats right? At your windows, not this time. Deep is your plight. The cat warblers fright. Shaking voice, promise me. Please don't ever open your door when you hear strange sounds late at night. Gran, we've been over this I'm a grown ass man and I can open my door if I want to shoot the damn tomcats keeping me up. Recording stops. Um. Short pause. I'm sorry about that last part, but you hear how creepy that story is? It's some kind of monster that eats cats and tries to come eat people or something. It certainly is scary Mr. A but I don't know how a story is proof of anything. Now is that the only recording? Oh crap. It is the only recording. I should do something about that huh? But you've got yourself a recording now too. We better make copies or the G-men are going to get it. Laughs. Very funny Mr. A. I sure am feeling tired and I need a little sugar before we keep going. Are you in the mood for some donuts? Maybe a cup of coffee? Coffee sounds great. I take mine with two sugars and a boatload of cream. No problem, as for donuts I only have sour cream glazed. Will that do the trick Mr. A? Wow, you're one hospitable guy huh Mr. Dot Bloom? We need more folks like you asking the real questions. And I'll take donuts if you got them. End log. Closing statement. Panasonic RQ2102 portable cassette recorder and recording recovered from Mr. A. Class B anesthetics are administered in cup of coffee consumed by Mr. A. Agent Bloom performed two more cover interviews and declared the incident as a short stress related hallucination to local residents. Mr. A. has been recommended a psychiatrist with a free first session. Catalogued specimens at Wilson's Wildlife Solutions. Subject skin pigment size, retracted slash extended, general behavior nickname assimilated larynx species. SCP-6040-1 dark purple 0.711.83 meters social doc equus cavalus. SCP-6040-2 black 0.381.01 meter lone or bashful felis catus. SCP-6040-3 brown 0.551.52 meters social happy canis lupus familiaris. SCP-6040-4 purple 0.340.90 meters aggressive grumpy scurris vulgaris. SCP-6040-5 gray 0.461.21 meters social dopey f catus. SCP-6040-6 brown 0.531.50 meters loner sleepy C familiaris. SCP-6040-7 light purple 0.491.32 meters social sneezy procyon loader. SCP-6040 files on WWS database. Searching for SCP-6040. Error 59 of 60 files corrupted. Displaying search results. Funny tidbits about and venary bosem behavior. By D.R. Edgar Fredericton. The funny ways the and venary bosem interact with researchers. SCP-6040-1 DOC. 
The funniest guy, he watches cameras with his eyes. SCP-6040-2 Bashful He hides in a moat, what a gentle soul. SCP-6040-3 Happy The friendliest of them all, he comes to play ball. SCP-6040-4 Grumpy Smallest of the lot, he tried to choke staff on the spot. SCP-6040-5 Dopey He follows the rest and gets bit on the head. SCP-6040-6 Sleepy Doesn't really eat, but sleeps in his tree. SCP-6040-7 Sneezy He might be a bit sick, he drops his larynx when he trips. Thank you for tuning in, we hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did please subscribe, like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.